here we are, everyone. Here we are. 2021. The college football world will be surprised once again. We're back. It's back. I'm so excited. I'm going to cry a little bit. We're all going to cry a little bit. But college football has finally, finally returned to TVs, internet streams all across the country and all across the world. And I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm so proud. And I'm one of the few guys that we'll talk about this week. We're talking about week zero. Yeah. A couple weeks zero the last couple years on this channel. And I gotta tell you, very excited. Very, very excited to talk about these six or seven games. Well, really six, because these are my six to see. Count them up, you know. Uh, but there is another game that I won't really mention here, which is Eastern Illinois, Indiana State. There's nothing really that I can say about this game. One, it's on ESPN Plus, and I'm not going to be forking down however much ESPN Plus costs nowadays to get, you know, for one lousy game. And two, I don't think either of those two teams will be doing anything in their conferences this year. Um, Eastern Illinois and the OVC and Indiana State and the, and the Missouri Valley. I don't think either of those two teams will be doing anything in their respective conferences. But we'll talk about the STS later down the line uh, as far as you know, the playoffs are concerned because we, this channel doesn't talk about the STS until it's playoff time. So, But there is one game though, there is one game that pertains to the FCS in which a couple of conferences don't go to the FCS playoffs, so we, we're f I'm in free reign to talk about them, and especially because their stuff ties into a bowl game in December, and you know what bowl game that is if you haven't been on this channel already. Uh, but we'll talk about that in just a moment, actually, um, because first things first, we have Brett Billima coming back to coaching. I'm surprised too, very surprised. When I first saw him. Um, in the Illinois gear in a Illinois basketball game in like January or February, I was confused. I was perplexed. I was like, why? Brett Bilma is just an okay coach. Why? But, you know, it is what it is. You know what's not you know what's not funny? You know what's not good right now, Scott Frost? Scott Frost is down bad. He's down real bad. There's all sorts of violations that could be coming from the NCAA um, pertaining to Scott Frost and his conduct with Nebraska and what in the world's been going with that. I don't really know the entire speculation of the story, but I do know that Scott Frost does have Adrian Martinez at quarterback for the Cornhuskers. I think Martinez will be alright. It won't be nothing special, but I think he'll be alright. Um, and one of these two teams, in all honesty, I'm going to say it right now, one of them's going to a bowl game. I don't know which one, but one of them's going to a bowl game. And that's the way we start off college football this year is Illinois and Nebraska. Not the greatest, you know, game to start off with. There's no ranked teams really in these six games that I'm talking about. And yet, it's all sorts of intrigue, especially with the coaches, for this game, this Illinois and Nebraska game, which was supposed to be in Dublin, by the way, but now it's not. Um, Hawaii UCLA is the next one, big one on the docket here. It's DTR time. It's always DTR time. Noreen Thompson Robinson. Man's a talented, talented quarterback. Can run, can throw. Did some great things when I saw a lot of those UCLA games in 2019, and it was just fun to watch him play. Really, really fun. And Zach Charbonnet has transferred over from Michigan. <clears throat> He's transferred over from Michigan, but I don't know if he played in 2020. Uh, but I wonder how that's going to factor in to what Chip Kelly has to offer. Because Chip Kelly is a guy that I think can get over the hump, but will he get over the hump this year? They gotta. They gotta get over the hump. You know? And what a great way to start against Hawaii, a team that, you know, is going through all sorts of different problems themselves. You know, they don't have They have a new home. You know, because Aloha Stadium is just unusable now. And they had to move to TC Chig, the athletic complex. And they don't get fans at their home opener. They're going to be on the road. So, you know, they're going to be on the road for this Week Zero game. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but we'll talk about all the other big storylines later down the line here in this video. 
um, San Jose State, Southern Utah, San Jose State. Remember, they won the Mountain West last year with Nick Starkle, who has come back. And they're looking to repeat. They're looking to repeat. And really the only thing for Southern Utah that I can say is that they have to get some momentum heading into the WAC next year. That's right, the WAC is back, baby. They're back. They're going to be coming back in 2022. And, you know, that's when the, that's the last game on the dock. That's a, that's a 10 o'clock game, 9 central time. So, you know, that's going to be fun. Uh, New Mexico State, UTEP, also going to be very fun. Um, mostly because nobody on New Mexico State's roster at quarterback has thrown a pass. Nobody's thrown a pass. Why? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. The spring kind of took some things out of New Mexico State. You know, Doug Martin is their coach right now for New Mexico State, and he's just been not very good. And it was most painfully exemplified in the spring game with Tarleton State, in which New Mexico State lost. Because Tarleton is in their first year. They're still transitioning. So technically, they lost to a D2 school that's transitioning to D1. In the spring, don't New Mexico beat writers. Well, I almost messed it up completely. Uh, New Mexico beat writers. Please don't count those games as spring as spring practices. Those were actual games that were played. And New Mexico State lost one of those games. They beat Dixie State though. And I believe Dixie State has changed their name to Utah Tech. But that's again, that's neither here nor there. But the I-10 rivalry is back. And how will New Mexico State fare now that they have something? And I don't, I honestly don't have anything on UTEP at all. Um, UTEP is not going to be a contender at Conference USA this year, in my opinion. But that's just me. You know, I could be completely wrong on that. Uh, but do have some exciting players, though. That's one of the other. That's one of the other late games on the docket for next Saturday night. Um. The only thing I have for Fresno State UConn is how will UConn fare? How will they fare after a year off of no football? Because remember, they haven't played since they left the AAC. They're now an independent. They have an independent schedule to navigate. And they have a difficult independent schedule to navigate. And I wonder, again, how will UConn fare? Fresno State I have nothing really to say about. I don't really talk much about the Mountain West around here. Um, because Mountain West just isn't a premier conference anymore. They're not. They're not the conference they once were. Yeah. But it is what it is. There we got a couple of Mountain West games on the docket. That's really nice. But the biggest game of the weekend, the biggest game of next Saturday, is arguably, you know, arguably a game that could be a potential celebration bowl game, the HBCU national championship game. In two T, of course. We're talking about Alcorn State and NC Central. NC Central has an interesting running back by the name of Isaiah Totten. Really, really interesting guy. I was going to look at some highlights later, stuff like that, see if I can find some highlights of him, because I think I think this guy could, you know, do some damage. You know, but NC Central hasn't really, you know, they haven't played. They haven't played at all since 2019. Guess who also hasn't played at all? Alcorn State. They haven't played since 2019 either. And Alcorn got punished for not playing this spring. They got punished. They lost two home games. Those two home games are now away games. And, you know, I wonder, how will Alcorn fare? Because the SWAC is a lot more difficult now. It's a lot more difficult. Um, you got teams like UAPB surprising people. And Alabama A&M won the SWAC last year. You know, Big surprise there, and now you have two new teams welcoming themselves into the SWAC. They're knocking on the door, and they're ready to bring the thunder, which is Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman. They're ready to bring the thunder, and they have all the, now the SWAC has all the big classic games. You know, they have the Bayou Classic, they have, you know, they have the Florida Classic. I mean, they just have all the games now. They have all the big games in the HBCU world now, as far as football goes. So, uh, what, so again, you know, we're wondering, how will Alcorn fare in, in the SWAC this year? How will they fare in a new realigned SWAC? Because remember, Alcorn is now in the Western Division. And the Western Division, 
it's going to be tough. You know, Grappling and Southern did not have the greatest years last year, but they're still there. They're still tough. So it's still going to be a tough time. Meanwhile, you got, you know, Jackson State, they're, they're still trying to prop themselves up with Neon. I don't think Jackson State's going to do anything. Meanwhile, you still got UAPB, you know, and you still got Alabama A&M, and you, still, and you have the Florida schools now. So the SWAC is going to be very difficult to navigate. So who in the world will be going to the Celebration Bowl from the SWAC? I don't know. I really don't, because I think the SWAC is going to be very competitive this year. So, you know, from now on, you know, I, I will cover, you know, more SWAC games, you know, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully we can get some more SWAT games covered around here. Uh, but NC Central, on the other hand, they're just looking to, you know, bounce back because they didn't have the greatest offense in 2019. They didn't play in 2020, really, if at all. I don't remember. And, you know, now NC Central, they're in a MEAC that is only six teams with football playing schools and eight total. And I wonder how they're going to navigate a difficult schedule themselves because they have a difficult schedule, you know, a difficult non-conference slate of five or six games, and then of course you know the SWAC slate, ever rather the BX slate of five games because now there's only six teams, so naturally five games in conference. So who will represent the MEAC in the Celebration Bowl? Now I know I know NC Central was picked to be third in the MEAC, but I doubt. I honestly don't think that way, but I think we could see these two teams again. I really think so. We could see these two teams again in December. And I think it will, if, if, if we see them again in December, I think the second matchup will be just as good as this first one. That's good. It's going to be a great, great time. going to be a really great time, you know. And that's a great way to cap off the night. Great way to cap off the first week of the season, really, you know. A game that's going to be all sorts of interesting. A game that has the Migos there. And it's supposed to have first take there too. But, you know, things just did not happen because of COVID. But let's talk about some of these other big things real quick here. You know, the whole COVID situation. You know, teams could potentially forfeit games or lose games or whatever because of COVID. Everybody has to get vaccinated. So, that's that's the first big thing. Let's check that off the list. There's nothing really more I can say about COVID just get vaccinated. Don't forfeit games. Let's, hopefully there won't be any forfeits. Uh, the NIL situation, nothing really I can say about it. There's nothing I can say that hasn't been said already. Names, images, likenesses. Players can now make money off of it. And I like it. It's high time we have players, you know, make money off of, you know, college football. Endorsements, advertisements, sponsorships, all that good stuff. they they got to make the money. Why, why, why wasn't this implemented years ago? Because, I mean, hell, <laughs> you know, Jim Harbaugh merchandise from 1984 out here. That, that would have been cool, <laughs> but it's here now. It's here now, and I'm happy for it. everybody that gets to have them, even in this climate of where we are right now. You know, I'm happy for a lot of those guys that are getting those sponsorships, you know, getting that money, you know. So, yeah. Um, oh, excuse me. The Texas Oklahoma SEC thing. I already made a couple videos about that. I already made a couple videos about that. So there's nothing really more I can say about the whole Texas the SEC thing, the old Oklahoma SEC thing, other than what I've already said. I don't think that the Big 12 will be keeping those two teams around for very long. It will be either 2022 or 2023. Hopefully earlier. You know, hopefully earlier so we can get that Red River rivalry game on CBS one last time. Uh, I, you know, uh, I want that. Please, please. But the ACC Big Ten Pac-12 Alliance, it's kind of stupid. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It's kind of weird. It's a... Uh, it's situation to think about because you don't know what in the world this alliance is going to mean and you don't know what this means for the ACC, you don't know what, know what this means for all the conferences here and it's kind of scary. They didn't even include the Big 12 so that tells you one thing more about the Big 12 right there. So who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? Um, but I really don't have much to say about that situation. 
But let me know. Let me know first off. Let me know what you guys think week zero is going to be. Give me your predictions. I don't really have a lot of predictions for week zero. Uh, mostly because I don't follow a lot of these teams. A lot of these teams aren't ranked. So um, it's, it's just going to be fun to see these six games regardless. You know, tell me, you know, how do you feel about the uh, the NIL situation, the Pac-12, Big Ten, a ACC Alliance, and the SEC thing, the Texas and Oklahoma, and also, you know, how, you know, COVID is going to factor into things. You know, how is that going to factor into things for y'all? Just let me know. Let me know in the comment section. Like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, do all that good stuff. I'll see you again next Saturday, you know, as far as college football is concerned. Next Saturday, I'll see you again so we can talk about the recap of Week Zero. Take care. Have a good weekend, everybody.